Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com, and welcome back to another Flying Solo where you submit your questions and I go ahead and answer them. If you'd like to submit your own questions, go to the link up on the screen, but be sure to follow the directions, give me as much information in a timely, short fashion, and don't forget to give me your name because your name is important. Now, before we go any further, don't forget to give this a like, share, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Now, let's get to your questions. James Beaver asks, at what point do you recommend getting incorporated slash LLC and insurance? I'm starting out and have done several family portrait sessions and have my first wedding tomorrow as a second shooter. I'm neither insured or LLC'd. I know it's a risk, but doing that would pretty much wipe out all of the money I've made so far. What's your opinion? James, thank you for your question, and I recommend that you have insurance basically from day one. You can work as a sole proprietor uh, for as long as you want, but understand that if somebody sues you, they're suing you personally. Now, forming an LLC is not that expensive to do. You can talk to your accountant, you can probably file it online yourself, and it won't be too expensive, but what it's doing is it's protecting you personally and your business separate. So if somebody sues your business, they're going to come after what the business has, and in this case, you say you don't have very much. But if they come after you personally because somebody got hurt on a shoot and they want to sue you, they're coming after your house, your car, your dog. They may take your dog because that's worth a lot of money. It's not really worth a lot of money, but you get the point. It's either being sued personally or they're suing your business. And that's why having that protection of an LLC is important. There's also other tax implications. I think once you start working jobs and getting paid outside of the family dynamic and friends dynamic, even the friends dynamic, I think it's a good idea that if you are making money or you are taking this seriously, that that you go ahead and you get the protection from having your own company, from being incorporated. Now with that being said, I think insurance is really important from just about day one. Not just because I have the app called My Gear Vault, by the way, if you haven't downloaded it, go to mygearvault.com. You can download it for iOS and Android. Best way to input, organize, protect your gear. You can also get insurance quotes there, and because we're talking about insurance, I'm gonna mention the app right there. Now why is insurance important? because what happens if you have $5,000 worth of gear and something happens to it? It gets stolen. Are you then gonna go ahead and do a GoFundMe for people to act as your insurance company? Or are you gonna have actual protection where you can then have the insurance company replace it minus your deductible? That's the way you should be doing it. You should have coverage. Now I will say the way that my gear vault works and one of our partners does have the ability to insure people that aren't professional LLCers. They are people that have just camera gear and they just wanna cover it, so they can do that. But as a business, there's also something called liability. Not only do you wanna get your gear covered, but you need the liability. Just in case you're at a wedding, somebody trips over your camera bag, breaks their leg, you're gonna be liable for that because they tripped over your bag. There's also other, plenty of other protections that come with having the general liability that insurance affords you. It protects you sometimes in case of uh, if, if you're you miss a shoot for some reason and somebody sues you, well, they're gonna sue you. You're gonna to have to give them their money back and they may sue you for a lot more money. You need some protection from things like that. Now that's just a random example. So I think right away, it's important to at least have the insurance. And think about it, if you can get an LLC going, or an incorporation of some kind, talk to your accountant, talk to somebody who's an accountant or somebody who knows what you should be doing in business and what works for you so that you're protected there and they're not coming after your car, your house, your kids, your home, your whatever it is that you have, your boat too, if you so happen to have a boat. So I know that's a long-winded answer, but I, I look for you guys out there to also share your opinions. Leave those down below in the comments and let's hear what you guys have to say. So let's get to the next one. Matt Carter asks, Hi Fro Team, what exercises would you recommend to develop your photographer's eye? I suffered from gear acquisition syndrome for much of my first year into photography and have realized my best work has nothing to do with the gear I used. What are the best methods to grow the skills that truly make a photograph? So Matt, this is pretty simple. I know you've got gear acquisition syndrome. The simplest way to expand your photography and your photography eye is to get out there and shoot. 
Yes, it is that simple. The more you shoot, the better you're gonna be. You're gonna realize how you can get better images. You're gonna get better compositions. You're gonna get out into the world and shoot. So some things that you can do is you can get into a photo club and shoot with other people because they can give you tips and pointers and help you further your interest in photography and get much better. Now just know that a year of shooting isn't that long. I've been doing this since I was 13 and I'm 35 now, that's a long time, and it took me five, six, seven, eight years, it took me a long time to start to even develop my own personal style and my eye. But, you know, it, it takes time. You need to get out there and shoot. Didn't like that answer. Best message to grow your skills and truly make, okay. Matt, thank you for your question, and I think this is pretty simple. How do you become a better photographer is you get out into the world and you shoot. You don't sit around hoping to get better pictures or just reading the internet or watching YouTube videos. You actually take some of the things that you've learned and you go experiment and you go try. You have it so much easier today than you did 25 years ago when you had a roll of 36, you would take pictures, you wouldn't know your settings, you get it developed and you sit there and go, well, why is everything too dark or why is everything too blur bright? And you couldn't learn from it because, well, I never wrote down my settings because that just was too much work. Um, so you have it a lot easier. Go out and practice, experiment. Try, if, you're, if you're afraid to get out of auto, then get out of auto and just figure it out. Start to do the trial and error, cause and effect. So a way that you can develop your eye is look at the classic photographers. Study their photo books. Even if you find their images online just through Google search, just see the type of images they were capturing and see what falls into the back of your mind. And I'm not telling you to go out there and copy what these photographers are doing. Sometimes emulating them is okay, and then you start to formulate your own style beyond that, that is another way to expand your photography eye, is to study the hundreds of photographers that have come, well, there's been more than hundreds, but the classic photographers that are out there, study their work, see what you like, see what you don't like, go out there and try it yourself, see if you can replicate it, and then change it to fit your own personal style. Another thing you can do is you can get involved with uh, photo groups. What are they, are they called photo groups? It's photo groups, whatever they are. Photo, you know, you go out and you shoot together. Those can be helpful. But what I will say is where those things cannot be helpful if somebody is sitting there telling you what to do or what's good and what's not good and you don't agree with them. You know, take a lot of what people say with a grain of salt, but take what people say. Put it into the back of your mind and analyze it and see if it fits your needs and see if it fits what you're looking to do. But at the end of the day, the best thing to do, other than buying new gear and watching too many videos on how to do stuff, is to actually go out there and do the stuff. I know it sounds simple, but just get out there and shoot and try, and you're gonna learn and become much better. Darius J. Webb asks, Fro and team, I own a 5D Mark IV, the holy trinity of lenses, and a 51.2, because I don't think a 40 actually exists. I plan to get a multi-purpose portrait lens, and I can't decide between the new Canon 85.14 that is releasing soon and the Canon 100 2.8 macro lens. I don't own a macro and figured that would be a good multi-purpose option, but not sure which one to jump on. Thanks, team. So here we go with the gear question. Thank you for that. Now, what lens should you go with between the 85 1.4 that Canon's releasing and that 102.8 macro? What is the better choice for portraits? Now, my question back to you is if you are just looking to do portraits, maybe you look into the Sigma 135 1.8. That could be a very good, well, I've used it. I've done a real world review of it. It is a very good lens for shooting portraits. It's sharp, it's colorful, it's fast focusing, and it works very well on your Canon body. Because you said, because you said portraits, that's why I'm leaning towards the direction of that versus a macro lens. Sure, the 102.8 is a versatile lens. You could use it for portraits, uh, but at that point, you already have a 70 to 200 2.8 because you have the L uh, Hebrew Trinity, or you called it the Holy Trinity. So I wouldn't at that point be adding something that is overlapping in that case. Now, an 85 1.4, it's not overlapping because it gives you that 1.4. I love an 85 for portraits, but I actually like something longer. That's why on the Nikon, I love the 105 1.4. The 135 1.8 that Sigma makes would be the one that I would recommend for you 
for doing all-purpose portraits. I think it's a great lens for that. But if you're not sold on that, then just stick with your 70 to 200 for now because that's a great lens for shooting portraits all the way out at 200 because you get your 2.8. But if you want sharp, you want colorful, you want a little bit more, I don't think you can go, go wrong with that Sigma 135 F 1.8. Not a bad option at all. So those are your flying solo questions. What are your answers? Don't be afraid to leave those down below. And if you like the content that I put out, all the free content that I continue to put out and the team works hard to put out, then please consider helping support the fro. That's me. Support the channel. There's ways that you can do that. You can go to store.fronosphoto.com to purchase any of the I Shoot Raw swag. You can also go to fronosphoto.com slash guides to take a look at any of the, currently the four video guides that I have out there for helping you get out of auto, for flash photography, for video editing, and for how to shoot video. We have a guide for all of that. You can go over there right now and get a free preview. And if you decide that you like any of them, go ahead and purchase them because you will know that that's helping us create all of this free content that you are hopefully finding value in. So to check out the last Flying Solo, go ahead and click up on the screen right now. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, comment, and like here on YouTube. If you're watching it here, I'll say here again on Facebook, don't forget to like, comment, and also give it a Sherry McSherrison because sharing means more people get to see this type of video to hopefully get help. That's it, Flying Solo. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.